Okay, Simon, the summer edition of Seasons of Car. <laughs> Welcome back. We brought the sunshine with us today. Yes. <laughs> We had big plans, didn't we, to be sat by one of your wonderful fish ponds in our t-shirts, sun beaming down yeah, on us. T-shirt and short, sat there with the sun cream on, but uh, no, no such luck today. It's freezing, isn't it? about 11 degrees at the moment. It's horrible. Yes, one of the coolest, darkest days we've had for a long time, and it's set to be like that all week. Typical English weather, you cannot predict it. No. And one thing we are going to hear is plane traffic, because Gatwick's not too far away, and many people in this world are not carp anglers, and they do not want to be in this weather. So they'll be setting off on holiday. Lucky people. <laughs> to escape what is actually, for a carp anger, a lovely day. Yeah, it's pretty good conditions. You've got to feel pretty confident if you're sat there with your rods out at the moment. Good for a daytime bite, for sure. But for a normal human being, they're going to want to escape this as soon as possible. Not good weather for a suntan. But it is summer, believe it or not, even though it may not look or feel like it. And one of the hottest topics of conversation at the moment is fish spawning. And everybody I talk to is asking, have they spawned at the lake you're fishing? They have where I am. There's, there's lots of places that have, there's lots of places that haven't. So for people that don't know what it takes for a carp to be triggered into spawning, can you shed some light on that? Okay, so it's a really interesting thing. And I, I think it's very important to say there's quite a lot of variables here. And each lake will have its own set of variables and things do change about so there's no sort of golden rule for every single pond but um, generally speaking if we take sort of a generic carp it's going to a female carp is going to need water temperatures of approximately 18 degrees centigrade um, so that's important now the, the textbooks will say 18 but there are definitely populations of carp that will spawn cooler than that and there are also populations of carp that will spawn considerably above that uh, i'll make that I really stress that because if you've got lots of different batches of fish in your lake from different suppliers, different farms, like obviously VS Fisheries, you pull them from other places as well, they may all spawn at slightly different times. So we might get to 18 degrees centigrade and one batch of female fish will spawn and the males are obviously ploughing there and that's a spawning event and as an angler you'll look out across the lake and go, they're spawning. A month later, that water temperature might have gone up to 22, 23 or 24 degrees and another batch of fish might spawn. And you often hear people wrongly say, they're, sp they're spawning again. Well, the males, yes, they are spawning again because obviously male fish, a bit like you and I, Elliot, when we were teenagers, we'd spawn <laughs> every conceivable opportunity. But the females will only spawn in the UK pretty much as a rule once in a season. Um, so it'd be a different batch of females spawning. So. Water temperature is really important. The presence of male fish for the females, so they, unlike a rainbow trout that could ovulate, but release eggs without the presence of a male fish, a female fish, a female carp will need the presence of male carp. They'll need a spawning medium as well, so something to spawn on. Now that might be willow roots, it might be a reed bed, but most commonly in the UK, I think it's fair to say we see weed beds. Uh, you know, certainly in gravel pit fisheries, as the weed comes up, the weed gets up in the surface and that's where the fish spawn. So they like to pick their nice warm water to spawn in. How do they spawn? Obviously we see them thrashing around. What is that process? Obviously they are What's actually going pushing on at eggs that point. out. Yeah, the so females. the female fish, so as her ovaries start to break down, so the ovaries in a female carp, there are two big um, cylindrical shaped organs inside the carp that are the ovaries and in a big female fish they can represent 25 percent of the body weight so a quarter of the body weight can be the ovary so in a really deep bodied fish it's very possible for a, a you know 42 43 pounds to spawn out to maybe 31 or 32 pounds and people say that can't be the case but that can happen in one morning in may or june so they can lose 25 percent of their body weight so that not all fish would lose 25 percent some might just lose one or two percent or five percent perhaps but um some of the really deep bodied fish can lose 25 percent of their body weight so um what happens at spawning time is those ovaries as the fish gets really close to the spawning period uh, the conditions are all tying up perfectly the temperatures there the male fish are there the weed bed are there you see the weed beds are there you see the fish start to con congregate in the spawning areas uh, at that point uh, the ovaries are starting to finish their final maturation the eggs are swelling up a tiny bit inside the ovary and that's when the fish are absolutely pumped right up and then what happens is the the connective tissue that holds the ovaries together starts to break down and in a wild spawning that happens over a few hours and as the ovaries are breaking down the female fish is, is 
tightening her muscles and she's pushing those out into the water. Now what you're seeing when you see fish thrashing on the surface is the female fish will come up into the weed and she'll wait for male fish to gather up behind her and then there'll be a point where she'll set off and the males will go alongside her. And as she's tightening her muscles up and forcing the eggs out, the males are doing exactly the same thing and they're filling the water up with sperm. So you end up with this cloudy, milky mass of water, eggs and sperm, and the sperm are entering the micropile, which is the little doorway on the egg to fertilize it. And that all happens very quickly. Um, so that's what's happening. And that process in the wild can take several hours for the whole ovaries to go, but normally in the morning. So you might hear the first thrashings of spawning starting maybe two or three o'clock in the morning in the summer. Uh, and then by sort of lunchtime, it's gone a bit quiet and you might see the odd male fish hanging about looking for a bit of an opportunist bunk up. But normally the process is over. It's quite interesting that in our hatchery here at VS Fisheries, when we spawn the fish, I inject them. So I basically mimic what's happening in the wild, but I speed it all up. Uh, and once her ovaries start to break down, the whole process takes an hour and then I can strip all the eggs out very quickly. So the spawning process literally takes 20 minutes in the hatchery and I've got bowls of eggs in the wild. It takes a bit longer than that. So that's basically what you're looking for. Now, I go back to what we said earlier on, you know, as I said, that in a, in a lake situation, that spawning may occur over several weeks because one cluster of females, one stocking of females might go in late May and then the next batch might go in the middle of June. So you might see spawning occurring on several occasions. So genetics can make a difference to when they're spawning? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, another thing you'll often see this time of year, unfortunately, is fish that have popped up dead. Yeah. Always around spawning time, it's a very common time to yeah, see. Yeah. Why are they dying during spawning? Okay, they, okay, there could be a number of reasons, but it's a very, very stressful period, particularly for the female fish. So they are, if it, as we said, they might lose 25% of their body weight. They're being absolutely harangued by the male fish. Then those males are jostling to get into pole position. And there's, it's, so it's a physically a very, very arduous event for them. Uh, and obviously as they get older and bigger and become more recognizable big fish, you know, that process is, you know, as you get older, you know, things, physical activity like that becomes hard work. Um, so it's, it, it can damage them. There's a, there's a lot of thrashing about in the reeds as well. You see fish that get damaged by getting bits of reeds stuck in them, skewered and battered on roots and stuff. But often what happens is you get blockages. So particularly as fish get older, the ovary breakdown isn't quite as clean. Uh, and maybe, you, you know, fish, they, they just get a blockage, a, a lump of dead eggs from a previous year that might block the vent. And if they can't get rid of those eggs or the weather changes dramatically, um, so you get very warm and very cold, they might, it might cause the ovary to stop breaking down and that causes complications and that can kill the fish. Um, so I know you, you often hear fish talk of this thing, spawn bound. Um, spawn bound is a, is a pretty broad brush because often if a female fish died in, let's say, December and you were to cut her open, she'd have eggs inside her. So she could be very big and, and actually she may contain lots of eggs and you might think, oh, that fish died because it was spawn bound. So carp, female carp will have spawn inside her most of the year, Mostly. apart from directly after spawning when she's just cleared out. What about your typically massive carp, you know, that are severely swollen, you know, you see all the scales are almost coming apart. Okay, well, that would, something, that's something we would call dropsy. Um, when, and you're talking, when you see that, like the, the scales of a pine cone, when they, they actually stick yeah, out. Yeah, the veins are mean. bursting through. So what's happened there is that's commonly associated with organ failure. So a carp is actually slightly more salty than the water in the lake. So water is always trying to ingress into the fish. Now a healthy fish pumps that fresh water back out to maintain its salt water balance. It's called osmoregulation. Now that's really important for the fish. Um, now it, as, as they get older and their organs start to fail, just the same with humans, ill health starts to set in. If those organs are starting to fail, then often you see these big weight increases and you start to see the scales sticking out. And because a carp is a cold blooded animal, um, uh, that can take a very long time to happen. So fish can, a carp, a carp are very bad at dying. They die very slowly. Um, you know, Mother Nature would really clear them up you know, if, if they weren't quite such big fish. You know, you don't see roach that are spawn bound because they just get had by a pike. Um, so because a carp is a very big fish it, it, and it's got, apart from obviously otters, there's not much that's gonna predate them they tend to die over a very long period. So I've seen spawn bound fish in lakes, I've had them, we've had them at the farm here, and they might last a season or two, but you can see they're not, they, they're not healthy anymore, they've become bloated. And the, they do have the ability to rid all that as well though, don't they, at the same time? Possibly, I've but if they get or dropsy, been... it's very, very rare for them to recover from that. Um, what about possible. two or three years of spawn? You know, I've seen fish 
a little club lake near mine. I remember a thirty-eight pound common came out of nowhere. Picture surfaced of it. Yeah. It was last seen. It was twenty-eight pound. Yeah. It was clearly swollen to the point where you were kind of saying it would probably die. It didn't die. It, it lost Spoiled all of its weight and it went back down to yeah. its twenty-eight. One thing pound. you see with older fish, in particular. Um, is that they don't spawn every single year. So when a fish becomes an elderly fish, if you put it in sort of a human spin, they don't spawn every year. Now, I, I, you know, got, we see that on the brood ponds at the farm. Some of the older fish don't spawn out every year uh, and they retain the fish. I think of maybe the car park lake at Yately, very, I know a lake you fished, um, uh, the, the very famous carp in there, Arthur, which was a female, despite his name. Um, that fish was a huge fish, was 52 odd pounds. And towards, as it became an old fish, it didn't spawn every year. And then suddenly it would come out at 32 pounds. And some bloke would be holding this fish that was a shadow of its former self. But actually it just spawned out. It was really healthy that it had spawned out. But as they get older, they don't spawn every single year. Okay, so let's talk about carp that do spawn successfully. We're yep. sat here now. I'm on a truck surrounded by a pellet. <laughs> You're on a trailer with, I don't know how many tons of pellet behind you. A few. But you're going to get through a lot of that now that the fish are spawned. Yeah, so once, so for a female fish, once it has spawned, very quickly the, the sort of the following year's ovaries are there and, and, and starting to build up. So initially, there's a period um, where the, the fish has to lay down the building blocks, if you like, the foundations for the eggs, uh, and that happens pretty quickly after spawning. So very quickly, once they've spawned, the, the next summer's ovaries are starting to develop. Um, so the so genetic material has been laid down, the building blocks, and then as we get towards the end of the summer, they're starting to actually build the, the bulk up, the yolk up of the eggs. Uh, and that's when they feed very hard. And that's when you see those really big weight increases. So normally by in the UK, by sort of late August, early September, the sort of period that you'd commonly associate with fish feeding very hard and people putting a lot of bait out, you're seeing these big jumps in weight and that's the, that's the yolk trying to build up, you know, building up on the egg. So the female is putting a lot, she's feeding really hard to feed up the yolk for the future eggs. Okay, so we're all keen to fish for carp after those. Well, I say we're keen to fish for carp after they've spawned. They're not in the best condition, but it's a good time of year to be fishing, isn't it? Yeah, once the they've, done, is the, once yeah, they've done their spawning, yeah. it's a good time to be on the way. Yeah. But at the same time, it is very important not to fish for carp as they've just spawned, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it's really, really difficult. And I get, that's a question I get asked a lot, actually, is um, how long should the lake be shut? Um, should I be fishing if the fish are spawning? It's really, really difficult. And if you fish a very big lake and the fish are all spawning at one end of the lake, then there's every chance there'll be a group of fish down the other end of the lake that aren't spawning. They don't all go to the same spot to spawn uh, and they don't all spawn as we've, as we've touched on at the same time. So uh, uh, my personal take on it is that if the fish are clearly spawning in front of you, then just reel in and, and either go down the other end of the lake and try and find somebody that isn't spawning or, or go home and give them a bit of space, definitely. And, you know, a few days, if, you know, if they're, if they're spawning on your fishery, then give them a few days to get over it. And directly after spawning, the fish often do look a bit beaten up, but they recover very quickly. Um, in warm water, scales regenerate very quickly, fins regenerate very quickly. Um, and yeah, you're right, there can be some fantastic fishing a few weeks after spawning because they're wanting to get on and build themselves back up a bit. And uh, the water's warm and hopefully there's a bit of oxygen in it. It's a great time to go fishing. I fished a lake once, big lake, and like you said, they were spawning at one end and people were actively fishing at the other end. But my thing is they, uh, they, can, easy, they can just as easily swim up to the other yeah. end, can't they? So It's difficult. But, Some lakes, you know, if you're, a, if, if, if you're a commercial fishery, you know, your stock is extremely valuable, as you know. Mm. We, you know myself and Viv Shears run a business, we sell carp, um, and they're expensive to buy. Um, and, you know, you, you're investing a lot of money in your stock, you want them to, to last as well. So I think there's a lot of wisdom in if you were a commercial fishery, shutting, if you see signs of spawning, maybe shut the lake for a few days, try and get that period, uh, and then maybe a couple of weeks after spawning. And in that couple of weeks, if you can give them a bit of supplementary food, then that's fantastic. Um, but it's not always possible. And it, you know, if you take a commercial fishery, a big commercial fishery that's got stock from different places, that spawning could go on for weeks and weeks and weeks, and that's your income stream. So you've got, to, you've got to try and, yeah, you could be shut for two months in the summer. Okay, so on the subject of food then, um, we'll talk about particles in a little while, because that's something I'd like mm. to speak to you about. In terms of giving carp back, giving back to the carp, sorry, once they've spawned, what should we be feeding with, you know, to ensure that we're, we're fishing for these carp, but at the same time we do have 
a degree of responsibility to be yeah, giving definitely. them some food that's actually going to do them good? Yeah, I, I think that's a great question. I, I, carp eat all sorts. So they're, they're, they're an opportunist fish that will eat, you know, as we've talked about, wheat. Uh, they'll eat pellet, they'll eat boil. You see, a wide range of diet. And a mixed diet is really, really good for them. Um, you know, so mi mix it up, but use the best quality diet you can. I think there's a lot to be said for, you know, my, my, when young guys say to me, oh, uh, I'm, I'm getting into carp angling, what do I need to do? I say, the things you need to think about, you want to get the very best hooks you can, sharpest hooks, strong line. Don't worry too much about the rod and the reel because if needs be, you could hand line them in. But the, the hook needs to be sharp, the line needs to be strong, and then you need the, a good quality bait. And there are loads of brilliant quality boilies on the market. Um, obviously, lots of good quality pellets. Um, but you know, invest in bait, line, and hooks, and you've got a good chance of catching some fish. Don't worry what your rods look like because the carp can't see that. What if they swim close by, though? Well, <laughs> in the handles ain't folded, you know. <laughs> On the subject of carp welfare again, yeah. carp care. Yeah. Now, with spawning, having just happened or being about to happen yeah. in most cases, there's going to be carp all over the place that have got signs of damage. Pumps and scratches. Whether it's on scratches, them. Yeah. you know, there's, there's lots of different forms of damage that you'll see on a fish. Yeah. Uh, well, mo a common one, like a lifted scale or a couple of missing scales, is very, very common at spawning time. How important is it? to carry carp care and which ones would you advise? <laughs> um, I, I think it is an important thing, particularly if you're, if you're uh, fishing on the more heavily stocked venues where the, you know, the fish are, it's, you know, they've got, they're having quite a hard, hard time of it. Um, so I think, yeah, it is a good thing to do. And certainly if there is signs of damage, scales knocked off or sores, then I think it's important to dry them off and give them a coating with a you know, good quality carp care product. Um, that's a good thing. And it, sh it, it shows, as you said about the responsibilities of the fish, it, it shows a level of um, you know, caring for our quarry and making sure that the fish that we're fishing for go on for another 20, 30 or 40 years. Um, so I, yeah, I think it's a, it's, a good, it's a good way to go. Do you have any, um, any in particular carp care products you recommend? Obviously I know Corda do one, Nash do one, very similar. I think they're that proper list based yeah. stuff. Are there I, mean, other I, ones I, I use the Corda one, but you know, because obviously I'm, I'm you know, sponsored by Corda and, and I've got no reason to change, but yeah, and we, I use it in the hatchery here and I've had really good recovery from damage on the fish. Um, but again, you know, I think there, there's a number of good products out there and you know, if you're doing something, it's better than nothing at all. If there's clearly damaged scales or scratches on the fish, then you want to try and make that right.